We are in an unprecedented time in the country where um, the rise of digital technology, digital tools, digital platforms um, that are allowing for the emergence of the digital economy in the country. Um, and with that, we need new paradigms in thinking is how do we prepare um, a, for a country that is uh, rushing full head into a digital economy, um, but is also a country that is also very young, uh, where we look at the demographic of the country where 78% of the country is under 78, 50% of the country is under 15. How do we prepare them for um, participation into the digital economy? Furthermore, how do we make sure that they contribute uh, to the fourth industrial revolution? Uh, what we are expected to deliver is a vision, a, a strategy for the fourth industrial revolution for Uganda, uh, charting the way in how Uganda is going to go, how Uganda is going to harness it. It is not to say that nothing is happening in the fourth industrial revolution space. Uh, right now, in terms of AI, Uganda is leading in Africa. In terms of blockchain, Uganda is leading in Africa. So it's not like we don't know what we're doing. We know. But then how do we consolidate these different pockets of success into a strong national position? There are a few gaps that are currently prevalent or existing in the creation of a digital economy blueprint for Uganda. I believe some of these sensitive pain points are the lack of relevant grassroots involvement in the planning process and in the implementation process, an undefined or unclear road to implementation from a financial standpoint, as well as a lack of communication or sensitization of many stakeholders. ICT as a sector has a lot of potential to support all the rest of the, the sectors, be it agriculture, fintech, tourism, and all these other sectors. So for me, I think the government has a, a lot to play in terms of support, you know? in terms of creating an enabling environment, you know, through good policies that are supportive of the innovations, you know, I mean, and the entire ecosystem. And so what we are doing is basically seeing how these uh, technologies are going to affect society to, the, to as far as we can see. Uh, we, can't, we can't say we are futurists. And then from there, we are going to see how do we position ourselves as a government from a policy perspective, because that's what government does. But through those initiatives and through engaging the industry, we'll get uh, where we're able to get a rich response. And so when we come out with our final output, uh, that is something that we can, uh, we can rally the country around. Having everybody in this room was really, really transformational to actually see the young minds that are thinking about um, how they will participate um, in the fourth industrial revolution and what they would like to see policy-wise to make that future a reality. We also need to band together both public and private sectors to come up with sustainable models of financing this development that we are trying to achieve. Because it's only when we are integrated that we can create solutions that don't leave anyone behind. And when we don't leave anyone behind, everyone prospers and everyone's willing to get on board. Because at the end of the day, we have, we have to offer something to the rest of the world and not only be at the receiving end as a country. Yeah, so even that, we need to. And I mean, and list the opportunities and see how to benefit as a country and then as a region because Africa has a lot to offer.